Hi everybody, this is Houston Haynes from Helium 3 Fusion's YouTube channel. And in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I prefer to stack and align my raw AVI files that I've taken from my imaging ses sessions while observing the, uh, the sun in hydrogen alpha. So listed in front of you right here are some AVI files I took and I used IC Capture software to take these. Let me open up a few of these to show you. So this is capturing around 15 frames per second. And I've basically taken different sections of the solar disk uh, to allow a generous overlap for blending and uh, you know to allow a lot of blank space around the solar disk for my final processing. But I have a total here of, let's see, besides the uh, Barlow ones, a total of five AVI files that I'm going to process here to make a full disk. And this is my preferred method. Now, a lot of people use Registacks which is an okay program, and there's also AVI Stack. Uh, personally, I choose Auto Stacker 2. It's an excellent program. I actually think it's quicker than all the other ones, and it's more simple. Uh, there are a few steps you have to take, but I think it's a lot more simple than, say, AV Stacks. Regi Stacks is, is a little straightforward, too, but I still prefer Auto Stacker, and the algorithms that are used to stack and align and the precision at which it aligns the frames really brings out, I think, more solar detail. Uh, on the on the disk in hydrogen alpha. So let's go ahead and open up the program. Okay, now as you can see, the program opens up in two separate windows. On the left is where you're going to be having, you know, you're doing all your options. Uh, you're opening your files, you're analyzing and all that. And on the right, you're just going to have your frame view. So since I just showed you I have about five AVI files, you can batch process your files or you can do them individually, however you prefer. So let's go ahead and open up these files. And I'm just going to go ahead and control click on each one of the files I want. One, two, three, four, and five. These are my five AVI files that would give me a full disk image. So once you select or highlight all these and click open, uh, the program is going to automatically batch process these files after you've uh, initially set the settings for the first AVI file. Now over here on the right, you see in the frame view window, it loads the first frame of the first AVI file in the view window, in the view window here. So just to give, give you an idea what that looks like. Now let's go back over here to our main window. Now under image stabilization, you want to make sure surface is checked off because we're not processing a planet, of course. And where it says expand and crop, this is really up to you. I personally like to choose crop, but if you can't afford any data loss along the edges of your files, uh, click expand. But do note that when you do use expand, uh, some of the edges and the data will be clipped a little bit, just slightly and slightly distorted, which could cause problems during a line uh, blending uh, in Photoshop. But uh, for me, I personally like to choose crop. Under quality estimator, leave it on gradient. And your noise robust, basically, the, the lower the number, uh, the less noise, you know, um, the, the three is a good number to start with. Uh, you don't really be, need to be messing around or going up or too big. Uh, I like to leave it on three. Three works just fine for me. And even though the scene wasn't great here, I have enough detail. And so just make sure to leave it on three. So now all we need to do now is we need to analyze uh, this first AVI file. And of course, like Registacks, you need to select an align point and something prominent. So there's a sunspot up here that looks a little prominent. But, you know, it's the size of the box is set. It won't let you go too over to the edge. So just something like, see this filament right here looks fine. So I select that. And then up here on your frames, you can just drag your frames around to where you, if you're getting a lot of drift, I would suggest setting it right in the middle so you can kind of average out your starting point to your end point. Uh, but I like just, just like to find a nice clear shot on one of these frames. Like that looks pretty good right there. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, so that's fine. So now we're ready to analyze, so just go ahead and click number two, Analyze. And Auto Stacker will do this process fairly quickly. There's two processes here. It's going to be doing surface image stabilization and then buffering and image analysis. And Auto Stacker will put a green check mark next to each process once it's finished. And this won't take too long. I'll go ahead and let it run to show you that it's, it's really not that lengthy of a process. You know, and it gives you a nice little timestamp next to uh, uh, the process 
you know, it's really no use. It just lets you know how long it took. Okay, now that we've uh, analyzed the, the data, um, you'll have a quality graph here, and this is important. You can tell, you know, I'm actually probably getting a lot of drift here towards the middle of the, uh, the video here. Um, you know, and you'd want most of your data to be above the 50% threshold. But of course, you know, with atmospheric disturbances and tracking, it's not always going to be perfect. Uh, I would prefer a little a quality a little bit better than this, but this is fine. So the next step, of course, uh, before we start stacking is we need to change some options here, the stack options. I personally like to use TIFF files because I like to use the 16-bit in Photoshop. Um, now you can choose the actual number of frames to stack or you can choose a percentage. I have found that for hydrogen alpha, around 30% of your total frames is a good stack. And I would recommend stacking anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 frames. Uh, you don't want to go too long. After 2,000 frames, you know, uh, you might get some shift and change in, in filaments or spicules. You know, um, so the sun, you know, it's, it's, it's dynamic enough to where after, you know, two to five minutes of recording, you might get some change in data. So... I, would, I wouldn't recommend uh, capturing anything over 2,000 frames in hydrogen alpha. And in this particular file, I have 1,000 frames, 1,018 frames. So I'm going to stack the best 30% of those frames. Okay, now down here, don't click sharpen to images. Make sure that's not checked. And then, of course, you can change your prefix to wherever you're going to save it. Uh, auto stack it will automatically put a folder on your desktop uh, with, a, with, it'll say, AS. Uh, the, the line point size you used for your, your batches. Uh, but you could change the prefix of uh, each of these files if you want. Now, HQ Refine, I do suggest leaving this checked. Uh, it will take a little longer to stack and align, but the, uh, the precision at which it aligns these files, the um, each frame, is much better if you don't have it checked. So I would make sure to leave that checked. And in Drizzle, I'd never mess with. I've had people ask me about Drizzle. Uh, I suggest don't use Drizzle. Just leave it off. You want to stick with these basic settings for now. So we're almost ready to go, except we can't click Stack yet, of course, because we haven't placed our line point. So let me go over here to the Frame View window, and we'll show you the settings on how to place your line points. Okay, so the line points we need to uh, apply to the window over here. So over here in the top left, or under align points, uh, click on multiple. Make sure multiple is checked. You don't want to do single align point. When you, we want to use a bunch of align points, so make sure it says multiple map is clicked. <clears throat> under align point size, the default is normally set on 70. Now the rule of thumb is the more detail you have in your images or each in, each one of your frames in your AVI file, the smaller the align point size you want to use. Uh, if you use a larger line point, you're going to have more space in between each align point, and you will be basically applying a fewer align points. So let me show you what it looks like on the default. So it's on 70, so I'll just click Place Apps and Grid. You click this uh, this button down here. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's placed the align points in there. But the boxes around each align point are relatively large, so there's a, a decent amount of space in between each align point. Now this would be fine if you don't have a lot of data and there's the, the canvas or the, the solar disk is pretty bleak or very fairly blank and not a lot of go, not a lot of action going on, or you know you have a lot of atmospheric disturbance and you're not really you know gathering a lot of data because the seeing isn't so great. Personally, I like to bump mine down to around 30 to 35, maybe 25, uh, if the seeing's really well. So let me show you what it looks like with a smaller line point box to 35. So you again select your line point size. You can either click on the presets here or use the toggle errors, er, uh, arrows. And then once you have it set, click Place Apps and Grid again. Okay. And now you can see a lot smaller of a line box. So the distance between each line point has uh, shrunk dramatically. And this is about what I'm looking for with the data that I have. And it's always nice to check your edges over here. A lot of people have complained about Auto Stackard's method of you know, placing its align points, uh, but I have had no issues with it, and I would still recommend this for for all hydrogen alpha surface uh, imaging, uh, stacking, and aligning. Uh, prominence for doing prominences, that's a different story. But for solar surface detail, this this program still is the best in my opinion. So I'm actually let's bump mine up to 35. Yeah, like around 35. 
So once you click, you know, select your line point size, which is something you will have to, you know, figure out by trial and error with your data, uh, just click the button, place apps and grid. And once you've done that, we're ready to stack the images. And the number three option will be available finally down here. So make sure all your settings are set, your prefix to your folder, the percentage of frames you're going to use, and then just click stack. And that is it. That is, that auto stacker is going to batch process all five of the AVI files that I had selected. And it actually doesn't take too long. Um, it'll complete all these steps. The bulk of the processing is during the image alignment and image stacking. These two processes alone will take the longest. Um, but I am safe to say that this is actually faster than Regi stacks and AV stacks. So I'm going to go ahead and let that finish up and then I will get back to you with the final processed images. <clears throat> okay, so AutoStacker has finished stacking and aligning uh, all those AVI files. And it'll put a folder that looks like this on the top left here on your desktop. It'll say AS for AutoStacker, uh, P30 or 40 or 50. And if you're batch processing some AVI files, it'll say multi. So let's go ahead and open this folder up. And here we go. So we have, we had five AVI files, and now AutoStacker has stacked and aligned them and converted them to individual 16-bit TIFF files. And these are the files we are going to be processing in Photoshop to bring out the data. Let me open up one of these real quick. As you can see, it's not great. Uh, it looks almost like an individual frame from your AVI file. But just like stacking uh, our processing deep sky objects uh, in regular astrophotography, we need to bring out the data in this image. Now, we're not going to be doing a lot of uh, level stretching or using curves necessarily, even though we use it a little bit, because the data is pretty much already here. Uh, we just really need to especially bring out the sharpness and the contrast, and then apply certain filters and layers uh, to, to make the solar disk look really cool. But anyway, this is the basic tutorial on stacking and aligning an auto stacker. Uh, subscribe or like and give me some comments uh, if you want me to run through anything else. I will be doing some Photoshop tutorials soon and I will be demonstrating the actual imaging and capturing process uh, outside with the solar telescope. So yeah, thanks a lot and uh, yeah, please subscribe if you would like to uh, see some more tutorials. Take it easy.